All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest webinar in our fall 2023 webinar series, uh, Navigating Information. Um, today, uh, our topic is the library versus everything else. Um, so what kinds of information can you get from the library versus Google? Uh, we'll talk about the kinds of information you can find in a library versus elsewhere. We will also talk about why you might choose one over the other um, and why you might wanna try the library first. Um, we'll take questions and answers at the end. Um, so please feel free to um, put them in the chat or you know, ask them at the end. So first let's start with uh, what kinds of information you can get from the library. Um, the library has materials that are online and in print uh, mostly focused on academic work, uh, but there are some things that can be useful for work and regular life. Um, you can search the library resources by using UDC Search, our catalog, on the library's homepage, or by going to specific resources uh, in the A to Z resource list. And we won't go into that right now since we have other resources on searching, including some in the webinar we did a few weeks ago about what the library offers, um, and we can offer one-on-one -on -one support, um, but we will just mention that those are there and that we can provide additional support later. So first of all, I want to mention digital resources. And by this, I mean anything that's online. Um, you can use them either on campus or off campus. You'll just have to log in if you're off campus. And some examples of digital resources, not necessarily everything, just some examples. So databases that have a lot of different things, scholarly articles, journals, news and magazine articles, audio, video, photos, eBooks, tutorials, data, all kinds of stuff, primary sources, archival material. And so most of these are searchable in UDC search, but they're primarily accessed through library databases, which are, are organized searchable collections of resources. Um, the full list of all of the databases is on the A to Z resource list linked from our homepage. And on there, you'll find multi-subject databases, which have lots of information about lots of different topics. And that can be a good place to start. Um, for example, Academic Search Premier, you might use that for interdisciplinary research or general uh, research that you might do in an IGED class. Then we have subject-specific databases that are more targeted towards specific areas of topics of interest, for example, nursing or engineering. So that's digital resources. Um, we also have what people often think of when they think of libraries, uh, print books and resources, anything the library has on shelves available for use. So a couple of different categories of print books and print resources. We have a general collection. So items to browse, unfortunately can't do that in our current space, but we will have that back in our permanent space when we move in. You can browse, use, and check out. Um, this includes academic books as some as well as some general reading materials. This also includes the reference collection, items that you can use in the library but not check out. This might be things that you can use quickly for general information, um, most often encyclopedias, dictionaries, atlases, and so forth. And then we also have special collections. These are curated collections about a specific topic that you can only use in the library. We have archives, <clears throat> print and digital material on a specific topic or community or physical objects. This might include local historical materials, papers or collections from specific people, recordings or memorabilia. We have two archives at the UDC library. First is the UDC archives, which contains materials on UDC and our predecessor institutions going all the way back to minors, minor teachers college. So we have things like photographs, yearbooks, papers, files, and other materials related to the history of the university. Some of those are uh, digitized as well and available online. And then we have the Felix E. Grant Jazz Archives, which is a resource for the study, preservation, and development of jazz music. And that contains audio, print, and digital materials on jazz. Other resources at the library include media, either in the library as physical resources or as digital resources. So in the library, you would find DVDs, videos, physical and audio and video. And online, you would find streaming video and audio through databases. Um, you can find things like news footage, training, tutorials, archival material, or other subject-specific material. And then lastly, course reserves. 
Uh, these are usually items or textbooks for specific courses for short-term checkout, uh, two hours at a time, to ensure that everyone has access. You can copy and scan and photograph within, as long as you're staying within copyright law. At the UDC library, we have more than 200 course reserves items. So that is an overview of what you can get at the library. So let's move on now to talk about web resources. Uh, what I mean by web here is that anything you can get through a search engine like Google or from a website, basically anything you're getting online, not through the library's website. There are library resources that are available online and vice versa. There's definitely overlap, but we'll focus here on research outside of that. So first, the internet is great. You can find so, so much on so many in so many different formats on basically every topic under the sun um, through news and other publications, social media, videos, tutorials, lectures, images, music, historical information, you know, all kinds of stuff. Government websites, nonprofit websites, more and more and more. There's a lot of stuff. It's not always necessarily focused on academic work like library materials tend to be. Things online are for a huge range of purposes, sometimes including academic purposes, but it's not necessarily the main focus. A great thing about the internet is that lots of people and organizations can create and widely share information. And that gives us easier access to perspectives, ideas, and information that we didn't have access to as easily before the internet. It is important to have more voices and more diverse voices sharing and creating information. That's a major advantage. But on the other hand, a difficult thing is that lots of people can create and share information. Uh, lots of information may not have gone through any editing or review process. Uh, so it could be misinformation or it could be wrong, out of date or misrepresentative. So all of that means you have to do some reflection about whether the information you find online is accurate and appropriate for you, which I'll get into in just a minute. So why would you choose one or the over the other? How is it that you figure out what you need? So between the library and the web, you have access to a ton of stuff. Why would you use one or the other? Um, it depends on what you need and what you're trying to do. The types of information we need to use depend on the needs that we're trying to meet and the context we're trying to meet them in. For example, uh, you would use different information for personal tasks like finding a new doctor or figuring out what kind of phone to buy than you would for a research paper for class or for explaining a topic that is brand new to someone versus having a conversation with an expert. So think about your information needs. First thing to do is figure out and identify all of the needs that you have. That is, what and how much do you need to, in order to answer your question or complete an assignment, and where should you look for it? And that will depend on a lot of factors. For school projects and assignments, um, these will often be at least in part defined by the requirements of an assignment or from specific guidance from your professor. But some questions that you can ask yourself to figure out your information needs include, what is the purpose of your research? Are you seeking background information? Uh, are you hoping to expand your personal knowledge about a topic? Are you working on a research assignment for school, such as a paper or presentation? Think about what do you already know about the topic? What do you need to learn that you don't already know? or how much background research might you need to do to get started. Think about how much do you need to know? Do you need a single fact, um, a whole paper's worth of facts, something in the middle? Think about the depth of expertise that you need to demonstrate. Think about what evidence you need. Do you need facts? Um, do you need opinions, data, or something else? Um, do you need research studies? Do you need primary sources, secondary sources? Whose voices and expertise do you need to hear? And then lastly, who is the audience for your research? Um, are you sharing your research with your professor or an expert in the field you're researching? Um, are you sharing your research with family or friends? Is it for your personal use? That will all affect what kind of information you need. So taking a minute to reflect on these questions before you start researching can help you decide where to look, what you need to look for, and when you have found what you need. So when it comes to whether or not to use web resources, there are a few factors to consider, especially for schoolwork. The first is, are you allowed to use web resources for this assignment, according to your professor? Uh, some professors don't want you to use internet sources, um, while for others, it's fine or maybe even required. 
So check the assignment requirements or ask if you don't know. Then ask, are web resources appropriate for the kind of research and information that I need? Think through those needs questions that we've just covered. Think about whether a better or more trustworthy resource might be available through the library. Think about whether the web is the only way that you can get the information you're looking for. And then think about whether or not you can adequately evaluate the source. Is there enough information to know who shared or created the information, why it was created, when it was produced, and how reliable it is? It's important to look at all information that you're using with the critical eye, but it is especially important to do this with information found on the web. For any information, regardless of where it came from, you want to think about the author and publisher. So who wrote or published this? Do they have the right qualifications or expertise? Are they the right voices to tell me what I need to know? And if you need to know more about an author or publisher, you can do some research on them too. For web resources, it can be sometimes harder to tell on these things. Check to see if there's an author listed. If not, look at the organization whose website the resource is on. Look at the date of publication or the revision. Think about whether it's up to date enough, or whether it's been revised. Again, it can be sometimes harder to tell online. Is there a date listed at all, uh, either an original date, a last updated date, or some kind of timestamp? Those are the kinds of things you can look for on the web. Think about the intended audience. Who is this for and does it match my audience? The reasoning and argumentation. Uh, including citations. Do the arguments presented make sense? Do they back up their evidence? Are there citations or references? Um, online, that might show up as hyperlinks to other sites. The writing style. Is the tone and language appropriate for what you're working on? Is the tone biased? Is the grammar okay? Is the spelling okay? Is the visual presentation okay? So on and so forth. So when you're looking at websites, you want to consider all of those factors, plus a few more other things. What can the URL tell you? Is this a company, an educational institution, a nonprofit organization, or a government agency? The domain will be different for all of those different kinds of organizations. Oh, you'll see .com for a company, .edu for educational institutions, .org for organizations, nonprofits, and .gov for government agencies. Think about whether the page or site could be ironic, um, like a satire or a spoof. And then if you have questions or reservations about this, how can you satisfy them? No type of information is always bad and no type of information is always good. How suitable and appropriate the information is will depend on the, the quality of the information, your needs, and the context to use the information in. So with so much information available through tools like Google and Wikipedia, uh, you may think you don't need to use library databases. Um, but remember, not everything is freely available online, and you can't actually always find all of what you need through Google. So why and when should you use the library resources? So in school, uh, you commonly need scholarly peer-reviewed information. Some of that information is free and freely available to everyone, um, but some other information costs money. Um, some of that reflects the cost of making the information, paying people for their labor, paying in, for the publishing process, and so forth. But some of it reflects how companies control access to a lot of information. Access to scholarly material, like academic peer-reviewed journals, can be especially expensive. Um, that's, this is changing, and it's complicated, but in general, most scholarly materials are not available freely on the internet. They're mostly available through pretty expensive databases that libraries pay database companies to subscribe to, like most of the databases you'll see in the A to Z resource list on the library website. The library pays to subscribe to these so that everyone at in the university community at UBC has access to this kind of information. You might use library resources when you need information that is paywalled or expensive. Um, books and media can be expensive, um, online publications and other sources of information are increasingly behind paywalls so that you would have to pay or have a subscription to access them. Since the library has purchased books and access to databases, you can often get those materials at the library without having to buy them yourself. 
You might use the library when you're thinking about algorithms and advertising and feeling a little bit skeptical. So first, algorithms and search personalization. So search engines like Google retrieve information from all over the internet based on the words that you enter in the search box. Um, to give you results, each search engine uses its own proprietary algorithm to determine how their results are ranked. So secret, owned by the company, don't tell you what it is. Google, for example, tends to have an algorithm that is based on the popularity of a source. So the more something is linked to, the higher it appears in the results. And that can lead to bias or certain sites getting higher rankings because they've gamed the system, or the search engine might give you what it thinks you want instead of what you actually want. In addition, sometimes search engines give different results to different people based on their search histories, their locations, and other factors. In advertising, um, remember, a lot of search engines are part of companies that are driven by advertising rather than quality search results. Google makes about 80% of its revenue from advertising that's targeted to you based on what you're searching. And oftentimes the things at the top of the search results will be there because of advertising. You might wanna use the library resources when you're looking for information that tends to be more vetted, edited, or evaluated. Information in library resources is much more likely than information on the web to have undergone some kind of review or vetting process during creation and publication. So it's more likely that someone has looked at it to determine its quality and reliability. So for instance, um, scholarly articles have usually gone through a peer review process, newspapers, books, and other publications have editors to look at things before they're published. Um, that layer of review isn't completely infallible um, or ever 100% a sure thing um, because no information is perfect, but resources that you find through the library are typically much more closely examined and assessed than other resources. So that can be helpful when you're doing academic or scholarly research, when you need to make sure that you're using reliable, high quality sources. You should still evaluate your sources to make sure they meet your needs, though, um, using the criteria that we talked about a few minutes ago. And then in addition to all of this, the UDC library has librarians. Um, reference librarians are professionals trained to help you find and use information. So our job is to help you navigate the complicated world of information and research. So maybe at some point you've had a frustrating internet search experience where you're just not finding what you need, or you're finding we too much, can't possibly pick through all of it. Um, we can help with that. Um, or maybe you're not sure where to look for something or what to look for in the first place. We can help with that. Um, maybe you've struggled to find the thing that you know exists, but you just can't track it down. We can help with that. Um, or maybe you've been unsure about whether the information that you found is high quality and appropriate for needs. We can also help with that. We've also helped organize and curate information for you. There's a lot of information out there, and sometimes it's hard to know where to begin. So that's why we've made research guides with recommended resources for every major at UDC as well as many other topics in interdisciplinary areas. Um, you can see those under research guides, which is available under quick links on the library's website. So that is all for the formal presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, we'll take them now. Okay, well, not seeing any, we will wrap up. Um, the recording of the webinar today will be posted on the UDC Library's YouTube channel, and so feel free to revisit there or share it with classmates. Thanks.